right, what is happening, my beautiful people, my fellow Amazon entrepreneurs or e-commerce entrepreneurs in general? What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing today? How's everybody doing today? Give me a big, big something in the chat if you guys are doing awesome. I see a lot of my students here, which is great to see. What's up? All right, I'm going to read the names. David, Jocelyn, David, Andy, Brandon, David, James, William, Jocelyn, Polly, Will, Winnie, Emily, Carlos, David, Ryan, Jason, Karan, Mahalia, Pita, Gary, Brianna, Dan. Okay, good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. Alan, Jason, Christopher. What's up, guys? We got Leo in the house, Mandeep, Todd, Calvin. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody's doing well. Awesome. Jessica, Elaine, I see a lot of my students in here, which is awesome to see. Okay, guys, let's, uh, let's, 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 I want to, I want to know where you guys are from too. So why don't you guys quickly uh, type in the chat box? Where's everybody from? Type in where everybody is from. Wow. We got Pakistan, New West, Vancouver, Arizona, White Rock. Vancouver. Wow. Look at Vancouver in the building. Look at all that. Victoria. London, UK. Vincent, how's it going? Taiwan. Wow. That's awesome. Thailand. Look at that. Arkansas. All right. Where else do we have? Where else do we have? We have Korea. We have New York City in the building. Los Angeles in the building. What's up, Steven? Hope you're doing well. Kyle, how's it going? California, Tawasin. Russia is in the house. Wow. We got Hong Kong and Miami. We got Israel, Ottawa, Russia. Wow. Look at that. Mexico. Where else? Ireland. All right. Connor, what's up? Connor McGregor. Uh, we got Peru. That's awesome. And Catalano, very close by. Awesome, guys. We got, it's so crazy. I mean, the fact that we're all in this room right now and everybody's from all over the world learning something, technology, I'm telling you guys right now, I mean, stuff like this 20 years ago, this would have been mission impossible. But now everybody can sit from the comfort of their own home, tune in, you know, wearing your pajamas and learn how to make money selling products on Amazon. And a lot of people are still saying, wow, you know, the, there's, there's one type of people that say, wow, there's been never a better time to learn how to make money online. There's another segment of people that are still skeptical of making money online. But I think we all know who the type of people in this room are tonight uh, or in this afternoon. And I'm very, very sure that you guys are the first type. So again, let's jump right into it, guys. Today, we have a very, very special, three special guests, okay? Three special guests. So Aaron, Charles, and Nick, I'm just going to ask you guys to unmute yourselves, go on camera. Um, if you guys can go on camera, that would be great as well. Uh, it actually won't let us right now. Uh, yeah. You have to. Give me a sec. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah. Uh, that's weird. I'll let you guys go on camera. Yeah, it says unable to start video. The host has stopped it. Unable to stop it. Uh, one sec, guys. Make host here. I'm gonna make you a host. Okay. Okay, you should be able to do it now. Oh, there All you right, are. All right, here I am. And then I'm gonna reclaim host, and then I'm gonna make Charos the host. There we Charles. go. Musical host, good way to start out. All right. There you go. And then right. I'm gonna. Go. Does Aaron? I know Aaron's in here as well. Does Aaron? You want to go on camera, or are you just uh, lurking? I'm just listening. Listening, in. listening. Yeah. You want to go on camera? Okay. All right. He's making sure we don't we have we represent well. That's what it is. Keep yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, you're wearing you're wearing a suit, so I mean you're already uh you're already doing pretty well there. So, all right, guys. Well, we're just gonna jump in, okay? So today, what we're gonna talk about is focusing on PPC, but more specifically, how to actually rank your product onto the first page using PPC only as well as how to actually stay on page one, because we all know getting on page one is great but you really need to stay on page one. Now, a couple of things I want to set off the bat. Guys, if you have any Q&A, please put in the Q&A button on your Zoom. If you take a look at your Zoom right now, there are two different 
uh, there's, there's two different chat boxes. One is called chat. The other one's called Q and a, we're going to have tons and tons of time for Q and a. So if you have any questions, please put it in the Q and a, if you have it in the chat, I'm not going to go in there because there's a lot of messages. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, put all your cell phones and stuff like that away. Okay. We're only here for a very short period of time. If you guys want to maximize your value and maximize your learning experience, I would highly recommend closing down all your tabs, put this as full screen and really dedicate the next hour and a half to this so you can get the maximum value. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So also there's going to be a lot of like, um, uh, so you guys, so th yes, this will be reposted later. So, um, right after the zoom call, I'm going to render it and then I'm going to put it on YouTube us on listed and you guys are all going to get a email to a private link that no one else can see. I'm probably going to open this up, uh, you know, a couple weeks later publicly, but, uh, for now it's private. So Charles, Nick, Aaron, we got 150 people in the webinar right now, and they're all super excited to learn from you guys. So guys, take it away. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves, who you guys are, and then we can jump into the meat of the presentation. Yeah. I just want to say for anybody who showed up to the webinar, tune in. You are in for a quite a treat. So Sellers Arena is a PPC agency, and we've just been killing it. we are worked with Tom. I think he probably talked a little bit, talked to you guys a little bit about that and how we just kind of crushed his results. And what I wanted to do today is do a presentation and go over ranking with PPC and also PPC in general, how to structure your stuff, what to do with the data when you get it, how to make sure that once you've got the data, what you do with it doesn't suck, how to fix it if it's broken, the whole nine yards. So if you've got a notepad on your PC, bring it up. If you've got ears, put them on, make sure you're listening and you're staying tuned to this. So we've got a little uh, little slideshow presentation here because PPC is a little bit technical. And I wanna make sure that you guys can kind of follow along. Feel free, print screen is your friend. Hit that button, steal, steal, absolutely take all of these ideas. I want you to walk away knowing everything that's going on and being like, damn, that was worth it. I'm gonna do, uh, looks like host disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, let me uh, make you the host again, one second. Are you gonna run the host? Here who, in about 10 minutes and it will be. Who wants, who wants to do that? So Nick, you're, uh, uh, Nick sorry, yeah. Nick is? Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll run it, yep. Okay, okay, make host. All right, here we go, you're, you're good. Okay, one second, here we go. Cool. Yeah, we can see. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas, fellas. Let me get my windows out of the way here. I can expand this. You want to bring up full screen? We'll be good to go. There we go. Perfect. Okay. That's good. All righty. Nice. So when we're talking about ranking with PPC, keep in mind that it works. Ranking on Amazon works pretty much the same way, right? And through the aggregates, everything that's going on, the two things, that really make the biggest difference are page views. How many people are looking at what you're selling? And then sales, how much are you selling? If you think about it, it makes sense. Amazon gets paid on how, how much traffic's on their site because they can always remarket, recapture those people later. And how many products are being sold because they get that, that referral fee for you selling off their platform. So they wanna make sure that they're incentivized and by knowing and understanding that that's how you're ranking and working with this, that's kind of how we're, strat we're setting up the strategy to actually rank the PPC. So we're trying to capitalize on those two things, get more people to buy, get more people to see and do so in a way that's not going to break your bank. So this is kind of an outline of the process that we're about to walk you guys through. The first piece is obviously keyword research. When you're setting up a campaign, what words do you start with? How do you pick those words? And kind of what's the good basis of things to begin the campaign with? The second part is launching the campaign. And under that, we're gonna go under campaign structure. How many campaigns do you run? What type of campaigns? What's the purpose for each of these campaigns? No. What kind of things can you do along with those campaigns to make them more effective? And then once we've got that data, and once we've you know, stepped in the future two weeks, three weeks, we know what's going on, we've got some of that data in, what do you do with it? How do you take that and optimize it to where you can take all those campaigns you were running 
and begin to build a process that lets you rank up your products and increase your sales. Finally, what happens if something's broken? I can't get this to work, my impressions are low, my CTA is down, man, how do I fix that? Right, this is the part that I don't see anything out there. They say, yeah, run your data for two or three weeks and then refine. I'm gonna tell you exactly how to refine. You're gonna have a manual here that you're gonna be able to go through and say, this is the problem, this is the solution. This is the problem, this is the solution. And we're gonna go through all of that. So before we get into that, we kind of want to talk about a cost, right? Average, average cost of sale, advertising cost of sale, however you want to conceptualize that. But a cost is something that people pay a lot of attention to early on. And the whole purpose of the a cost is just to let you know whether or not the advertising is making you money on the advertised units themselves, right? If you sell three units at hundred percent a cost, all that means is that you lost money on those three units at 100%. That's what that means. It doesn't tell you how profitable you are. It doesn't tell you how much your account is going. It just says on the advertised units, what are you working with there? So because we get asked this question a lot, what's a good A cost? That entirely depends on your business. If your business has a margin of 80% and you're really pushing hard organic, because that's where most of your sales are gonna come from. Once you get ranked up and you start moving, most of your sales are gonna come organic. So if you're really pushing to be number one, to be number three, to be number five, and you're just trying to push up there, a good A cost is anything below what you're paying, below your margins, and a better A cost is anything below that, so below 70, below 60, where on the advertised units themselves, you're actually making money. So we have right here, number three, what is your goal with advertising? Keep in mind that there's two kinds of ways to make money with ads on Amazon. You can make money directly off the campaigns. I put a dollar in, I sold a product for 25, after fees I made seven. Or you can do, you can make money by ranking in high organic categories, things that have a lot of searches. You know, I'm selling 100 units with PPC a day, that's, go, that's about break even, but from those 100 it's helping me generate 7,000 sessions each week, and I'm selling you know 800 units every other day from that. So keep in mind when you're talking about a cost and what you're planning to do that there's two different ways to kind of look at this. All right, campaign structure. All right, so we're going to talk about when you're setting up the campaigns. What exactly are you kind of doing? what goes into the keywords, and this is the first part, right? You've stepped up, you said, I'm ready to start selling on Amazon, I'm ready to start advertising. How do we get these things initially done? What kind of keywords do we get? What kind of structure do we put into the campaigns? How do we do that? Why is it? So that's the piece we're about to be talking in on now. Yeah, so I can go ahead and take this. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, so, yeah, so when we're getting started building out the campaigns, one of the first things we want to think about is, okay, are we starting brand new? Do we have data or do we not? So if we have, ex if we have existing data, that's great. Like say you're a company we just started working with and you had, uh, you had just an auto campaign running, a manual campaign, some of the basic stuff like that, and you have some keywords that have converted to sales, that's awesome. We can take that and we can use that to throw into our new campaign structure and kind of hit the ground running. But say for example, you don't have any data at all, you're brand new or say you just haven't started running PPC yet. Well then we need to do a little bit of keyword research. So with that, we're going to have to use specific tools, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, start doing that. And then after that, we want to make sure we're grouping, our products into the campaigns correctly so if you have similar products we want to make we don't want to like have a bunch of different campaigns competing with each other so we need to make sure we group them properly to prevent that and then from there we want to set up proper um, budget and bidding tiers and we're going to go more into that in a minute but just keep that in mind and then from there we're going to negative exact match we're gonna do some negative exact matching in these within these campaign sets to prevent the campaigns for 
specific product from competing with each other. Okay, so let's go we ahead and jump a, in. We yeah. have a live question here on the, and you guys, if you have questions, throw them at us. We're yeah. live, we're animated, we're here. You can see that we're real. Ask us the questions, throw it out there. We have, does this approach replace rank and bank? You know, does ranking your product with PPC replace rank and bank? Now, if you think about it, they're both the same strategy to do the same thing, right? You're trying to kind of push that up. So when you're thinking about that, Rank and Bank is giving away the product so that you get enough movement to kind of move up to the front page. So your cost on that is obviously gonna be 100% because you're giving away the product or whatever rebate you're doing. That's the cost of getting those units moved. Rank and Bank's a way to move the units. You can also move the units with PPC, and if you find enough keywords that have a good ACoS, it's absolutely an alternative that you can use on some products to rank without having to give away the unit. So you can do launches cheaper that way or ranks cheaper with the PPC than you can in Rankin Bank in some categories. If you're talking some of the most competitive categories on Amazon, your PPC may be pretty close to your Rankin Bank cost when you get started. So which you choose is simply a matter of which category you're in and how much you're looking to spend on that initial launch. Mm. Yep. Okay. So now then continuing on with the research. So let's see, the first thing we want to think about is what tool we want to use. And I don't want to get too hung up on this. Um, we like helium 10, but there are other plenty of good tools out there that you can use to get keywords. Um, but we like to use Cerebro because we like to look at our top competitors in our category and we like to see what they're ranking for and kind of get a good basis for our keywords from there. And then we want to keep in mind our, our target, target audience, what our, what our customers would generally be searching for. And we want to kind of have an intelligent look at, um, take the time, spend some time looking at what are the most relevant keywords that we'd want to start out with in these campaigns. Okay, so we have about 30 to 50 max keywords. And again, this is if you don't have any data at all. Because um, if, you, if you throw in too many keywords at once, Amazon's only going, it's going to, Amazon's going to look at which keywords are converting the best. Its algorithm is going to push those up to the front any, anyway. So it doesn't make sense to have you know, a thousand keywords in a campaign, you're probably only, only gonna see action on the top 10 or 20, at least for a while until you finally decided, okay, those aren't working. You push the bids down on those and allow the other ones to have a chance to run. So with the 30 to 50 keywords approach where the way the, way the system works is where it kind of has a more organic approach to finding the ones that work and we'll be going more into that once we show you how the, we tier the campaigns and we have different campaigns for research and different campaigns, uh, specifically the exact match cam campaign to really hammer on the ones that are successful. Right. So if we're looking at you know, product grouping, right? How do you put the products together? This is part of the strategy, if you have and I almost held my credit cards up here, but we're live, so I don't want you all to get my numbers. But if you have two credit cards, right, or two different items, two little, I got my fiance gave me these, this little emoji, emoji things, right, you have two of these. I would put these in the same grouping because they're going to be used for the same audience. There's a school of thought going around that every product, no matter what it is, needs to have its entire own campaigns its entire system is going to have different keywords. But when you're looking at something as similar as two of these little bears or little chickens, as they were, little seals, if you're looking at those, is the buyer going to look for those same products? Is somebody who's buying, you know, a, a little a little toy, a little you know, jelly, a little gummy seal going to buy a little gummy bear? There's a very good chance they are. And what's great about Amazon is that you can put those products together in the same campaign structure in the same product grouping and Amazon will show whichever one is more relevant to that customer 
it will show that product in the ads. If you were to split those up, if you were to have the seal and the bear on different campaigns, a couple of things are gonna happen. You're gonna start bidding against yourself. So, you know, gummy toys, you know, is over here. And then you have this campaign that has a higher budget for gummy toys. And then this one didn't get any impressions. And you're like, well, this doesn't seem to be selling so good. Not entirely true. This one's just outbidding that one. So you're getting more quality placements, better placements, more frequent placements. And you think that this product isn't working. So in addition to doing that, then you have to go through and you have to do all the work twice. I am a man and as an agency, we are a man that be believes in simplicity. We wanna make sure that the work being done is very targeted and intentful. And if you're changing campaigns that have 90%, 80%, 70% of the same keywords in them all the time, you're literally doubling your work. So when we're talking about PPC, you need to start thinking about this in terms of this is a group of products that are being supported by this campaign. And or this one product is so different from the rest of them. This very different product, let's say, you know, this, uh, a cup, this cup is very different from the little gel, the gummy seal. So that has to have its entirely other campaign because it's a completely different product group. Within those product groups, what you're thinking about, and this is gonna play toward you know, some of the questions asked about keyword research. Well, what, uh, what keywords besides the ones in Helium 10, what keywords besides the ones you pulled up with Cerebro that your top competitors are working, what other ones do you start with? And it's important to take a step back and realize what we're doing and what Amazon is. Products are being sold and the vast majority of people are going to Amazon to buy a product by typing in the word, right? This is not news to any of you. That is a keyword, but that is what we're trying to figure out. And that word is very different depending on who's trying to do it, what's going on, where they are in the country. I'm originally from Wisconsin. If I wanted to buy a water fountain, I would go on Amazon and I would type in the word bubbler. Many of you have never heard about that. That's a regional example. That's a keyword that applies to 1 50th of this state. So you have to look at how many of those people, what kind of volume is that search getting on Amazon? Any place, pretty much any place else, you type in water fountain, that's gonna be what they're going for. The difference between water fountain and bubbler is going to be the searches and the cost of the cost per click, right? How much does it take to play in that arena? All right, we've got some questions pop up here. Is there a limit of products that you can have in a group? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. there no, you go. I mean, you, yeah, you can easily add, say you have like 30 or 40 different uh, picture frames, for example. Throw them all in there if they're very similar, if they have very related keywords. Right. It's about um, similarities between the products and the groupings. Yeah, yeah. If we group two similar products together, that one has a better conversion rate, that one will always win the bid and the other one gets more exposure. How do you deal with this? Kind of take a step back and realize that part of the display process isn't always conversion rate. Sometimes Amazon's going to target if you're searching something, if the customer is searching something, they have history on that customer. You guys really didn't think all those Prime accounts were just about the $15, right? So helping target the ads so they get more products. Amazon has data on the customer, and sometimes they're going to display the variation of the product that most fits what the customer is likely to buy. So that's going to pop up. Part of their algorithm is relevancy to the guy searching, to what's going on. So even if one product has a slightly better conversion rate, that's gonna start showing on certain searches for certain customers. But Amazon's always gonna start picking the ones that are most relevant and displaying those. Yeah, if, say for example, if, if the search is very broad, the customer search is something very broad, Amazon will pick the one that's just generally does better. But say that customer searches something a little more specific 
like you have a red version and a black version, well, then it's going to, Amazon's going to know to put the black version more likely because that's, that's kind of in your listing that's relevant to your listing, your product. Somebody asked for a uh, service about services on listing optimization in order to make sure you're feeding into Amazon's algorithm. That's a little outside this webinar. Um, depending on how long we're here, depending on what Tom wants to do toward the end, um, we can certainly break that down. I have a five minute breakdown that will blow your mind. Everybody tries to optimize the listings for the algorithm. What you should be doing is optimizing that for the customer. And that's, that's an entirely different topic. Yeah, let's, uh, we can talk about that near the end. But uh, hey, why don't we, uh, why don't we like uh, do some Q and A maybe at the end? Let's like, let's, let's bang through the slides. We can do, uh, yeah, we can do some Q and A at the end this way, you know. Some people are probably like, I want to see the next slide. I want to see the next slide. So let's, let's, yeah. let's answer one more question. Did you answer Steven's question yet or no? Let's see. Um, there we go. If I put all these products in one group and then the ad will show, only show up in one ad spot, correct? So if I want to dominate multiple ad spots and I will not be able to do that if my similar products are all in one ad group, please advise and confirm. So the, the well, answer is you're saying that like when your products are only going to win one spot. Well, it's displaying on what's most relevant. Keep in mind too, that you can only win the bid for one slot, right? If you're running multiple campaigns, you're driving up your own cost. If there's, if the bidding process is on slot one, only one person is going to win that slot anyhow. So if you're looking at that, you know, why, why would you want to run two different campaigns that you're trying to both get them to appear in slot one, both of them can't, right? So the one of them is going to win out over the, over the other, and they're going to compete against each other to place up. Amazon's going to choose the most relevant of those products to place. And if you're trying to place certain products in other spots, we run other campaigns, product targeting campaigns, defense campaigns to help present those in other slots around. What we're talking about now is primarily for general keyword searches, and we're going to layer on some of the other advertising later. Yeah, and that also gets into kind of eventually getting your products ranked organically. So if you have the different variations and whatnot, and we'll get eventually we'll get those other vari variations ranked up. So Amazon will then be able to sh cover page one with all your products. But that's only that's only if you actually have your your variations split up into different listings. So it. It, it depends on your strategy there also. Yeah. Let's see. So, so okay. Go ahead. In terms of general campaign structure, I like to think of this as an inverse pyramid, right? And a lot of you guys are going to be familiar with this type of thinking, but the magic of everything is always in the execution what exactly you're doing at each of these levels and how the triggers and targets are set to move between them. Our structure works like this within one product group, right? So for, you know, the cup and the gummies, they're going to both have the same structure, but for completely different campaigns. So we have the automatic is at the top here. This is a very low bid designed only to find longer tail keywords, things that you yourself are never going to think of as being relevant or part of your product that would make sense. The purpose of this is to just force Amazon to do a lot of working and to, to detect shifts in market language. Now, if people are searching for a certain product, a really good example I have is that if people are looking for whey protein, they're looking for workout supplements, that before the whole COVID thing was a huge area, right? There was a lot of people searching for that. Some people are, but when everything started, you know, people began to get really scared. They began stockpiling things when this started. A lot of those searches shifted over. They moved more toward, you know, protein, storable protein, like rations. They were looking for things that they could store. They were looking for the same product, but they were looking for them a different way. An automatic campaign can help show you that there's been a huge uptick in impressions for a certain word that you may not have immediately thought of as being particularly relevant to right now. And those words are then taken through the process. From there, we have a broad, a broad match campaign. Again, we're trying to find out, laser it down, because I call it a bed 
Somebody else may call it a cot. There's a bunch of different things that are called. But if I go on Amazon and I search, I could just search bed, but I could search bed for men, you know, comfy bed, queen bed, large bed, right? These are all keywords. These are a ton of different keywords. Broad match is roughly defined as any search that has the word in it. So if it has anywhere in it the word bed, that broad, that's what broad match qualifies for. In our system, we're gonna talk a little bit about making the broad match only deliver, only deliver to broad terms so that you save yourself a lot of cost. Once we see, hey, this is getting impressions, this particular term is moving, it's working, it's getting stuff done. We start moving that toward the phrase match. We bump it down, you know, we bump it down the pyramid again. All right, so now the we're at the phrase. That's one word before, one word after, and that's all it can have. It can't have, you know, anywhere in the sentence. That's what broad is. We're looking for one word before, one word after. Again, here, what we're looking for is, are we getting maybe sales? Are we getting impressions? Is this relevant? Are we displaying? Are we converting? Those things show us that this very particular way to say that keyword is actually working for us. And then we bump that down to kind of the last, the last peg, which is the exact match. In the exact match, you can control your bids on, a, on even a cent by cent basis if you wanted to get that granular with it to show exactly what's going on. If you're bidding on the word, you know, hyper or dry protein for men, and that's an exact. If you change that up 15, 20 cents, you changed your bid on only one keyword. So you have a lot of very fine control there. If that same, you know, dry protein for men is in phrase and you change that 20 cents, you've actually changed the bid on what could end up being several dozen or several hundred different words, some of which may not apply to what you're selling. So you really want to try to fine tune at the bottom of the pyramid and make sure everything else is a relevancy check. Is this working? Is it selling? What's the variation that's actually pulling it out? Is it working? Is it selling? What's the variation? And start pumping things down. In this way, you can begin to get a data set where you know this keyword consistently gets me this many sales at this price. So then you can say, maybe if I take that price up 20 cents, it's getting me this many sessions and this many sales, and I'm making this much money off that. My margin may be a little bit less, but I'm seeing an overall higher volume of sales. So at that exact match, what you're looking for is that pendulum, right? Where's the point where I'm making as many sessions as is reasonable and cost effective and as many sales at a price that I want. Yeah, another cool thing to add on to that is like, say for example, um, some odd combination gets converts to a sale in the broad match campaign, for example, like, um, I don't know, queen size bed or, or bed queen size, bed queen size, right? And it not only gets thrown into the exact match campaign because now we want to see if we can just fine tune that specific keyword to, to optimize fully and get the most out of it, most sales as we can out of it. But it will also throw it into the phrase match campaign also for further testing, further expanding on that to see if there's any more uh, longer tail phrases like comfortable bed queen size, for example. It'll, it'll test that too or any other um, combinations of just adding on to the beginning or end of that. So that's another cool thing about our system just to keep in mind. So when you're kind of looking at, all right, you know, I've used the Helium 10 to get the keywords. I put those keywords into that campaign structure we have where we have different trigger events that determine when a product moves up, up the tiers. If it's getting X amount of impressions or X amount of clicks, it moves from broad to phrase, right? The particular term that got that moved from broad to phrase. So then we go, okay, what's the next step? And through each of those triggering layers, and that entirely depends on your conversion rate, your cost, et cetera, that determines when you move down these campaigns. But one of the biggest things everybody wonders is, well, that's all great, but how do I price out the bids for this? Where do I bid on this to know what's going to be cost effective? 
And that's kind of where the bid strategy comes in. So you have this campaign set up where you're going down the tiers and you're actually saying, okay, I got five clicks here. I downloaded the search term report. The search term report said this keyword in broad was the one that got it. It goes to phrase, it goes down, it goes down. But what do you actually set those bids at? Yeah, so that's where in the initial startup of your campaigns, you're gonna look at what your general cost per click is for the category. You're gonna have to look at um, what Amazon suggests. Once you figure out, a good, get a good idea of that, sometimes you wanna go a little bit on the higher side in the beginning, it depends. That's something you kinda of have to test. But once you figure that out, for your exact match campaign, when we set these up, you wanna give 100% of that to the exact match campaign because any, anything you put into the exact match campaign or in anything that ends up going into it, we want we know it's good, we know it converts well, or we know it has a good chance of converting well. And so we wanna give 100% of that bit. So say for example, your average cost per click for your product is a dollar, we're gonna give 100% of that in the exact match campaign. And from the, for the other ones, we won't, we won't wanna give so much of that. We wanna go so hard on those because we're not quite sure about those. The phrase broad and auto levels, those campaigns are more for research. So we wanna, and they're kind of reaching out there and trying to figure out little odds and ends, keywords that we don't know, we're not quite sure about yet. And we wanna make sure we're not competing with the exact match campaign on those. And it's similar, we haven't talked a lot about the product targeting campaigns, but then that's something we'll go into later more, but that the product targeting campaigns all have a similar structure. Um, whereas not only will the auto campaign feed ASINs into it for product targeting, but also the category target, which behaves like a, uh, the category ad group within that product targeting campaign behaves like an auto campaign and feeds into our ASIN, specific ASIN targeting campaign so we can really focus the bids on that, similar to the exact match campaign. And feel free to take a screenshot of this to keep it in mind or yeah, like Tom said, he'll be posting this later for review. Um, so yeah, and then similarly with the budgeting tiers. So, Again, we want, we know the exact campaign is the, that's got our best keywords. So we're gonna give the most budget to that. And again, just tear it down, phrase, broad, auto. We want to dedicate a little bit less budget to those. Obviously let's have lower bids. And we, we just don't wanna to go too wild with research campaigns. And, and in general, yeah, they're just going to be trying to pick up outliers and funnel into the exact match campaign where we can really step up the bidding on those and yeah, spend more effectively, efficiently. Keep in mind too, guys, that all, what we're talking about with this budget, this is when you launch the campaign, right? This is when we're gathering the data, we're pulling the stuff in. If we have data already from existing campaigns, if we have other things that we have to kind of pull in, that the, after the initial refinement, this is going to change, right? These kind of these metrics will change and they'll flux and the campaigns may get more of a budget here and less of a budget there. This is just for the initial launch before we've got data. How do you set up your budget to spend where you know it's going to spend? So this is what that is, right? This is, I'm just pointing out, this will change after we get that data in. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. So at every tier, and if you want to kind of bring up the funnel again, right? I kept, I kept alluding to don't bid against yourself. Don't bid against yourself, right? Um, we don't want to get into a position where we have one word. Let's take, you know, the word creatine. If we had just any variations of creatine throughout this process, then what would happen is if, let's say, a creatine, one of the keywords that creatine could deliver for, the uh, dry, dry creatine for men, right? That's a broad match. If somebody, if somebody then searched creatine for men or men's creatine, that can appear in phrase. So what you have now is the broad saying, this meets my criteria. 
in the phrase saying, this meets my criteria, you have it kind of both green lighted on both campaigns. So now it's like, okay, who gets the spot? Who gets that win? And what we want to make sure is that that bidding process doesn't compete against you and it doesn't take your data and put the data someplace where it's going to be hard to extrapolate. So how we prevent this is we negative exact match the, the certain keywords. We want to make sure that the broad campaign only delivers on targets that the broad campaign is able to, right? We want to keep the campaigns only delivering to the furthest out they can deliver. So with the broad campaign, we want to go in and we want to make sure that within that we're negative exact matching every phrase that we put on the phrase campaign so that it keeps that data out of the broad campaign. We keep it pushed as far away as possible so that broad campaign is only looking for things that fit those broad criteria. Same thing with the phrase. I don't want the phrase fighting over the word creatine or the word gummy seal. I don't want that. So I want to make sure that when we move that up, when it's moving up the tiers, we're going ahead, we're going ahead and we're actually putting gummy seals as a negative in the phrase because gummy seal could apply to the phrase. And similarly, we want to make sure that that particular word's not appearing in the broad. We want them to go as far out as possible with their research and what they're doing. I only want phrases in my phrase campaign, right? It seems kind of simple when you think about it, but it's really easy to get that data convoluted. And then it looks like, oh, my phrase campaign's doing the best. Well, not really. Your phrase campaign is bidding on a lot of exact terms and that's skewing your data. Yeah, so, and here's a basic slide breaking it down. So in the phrase match campaign, so say, we have the keyword comfortable queen size bed that was thrown into all of the campaigns at the beginning. So obviously we're gonna hammer on that. We know it's converted before or it's a keyword that we researched. That's gonna be an exact match campaign. We're gonna control the bid right off the bat. But in our research campaigns, like the phrase match, broad match, for example, like Chuck just said, we're going to negative exact match that same keyword in the phrase match campaign. So now the phrase match campaign can only look for keywords like queen size bed plus another keyword added on to the beginning or end of it. And for the broad match campaign, we're going to negative phrase match because we don't want it looking for that phrase at all. We only want it looking for a, a new combination of those words. Like they're completely flipped around, but it have maybe has one of those words in it. So it's expanding even further. It's an even more broader search continually. And this and the auto campaign obviously is just similar to the phrase match, but it's, it's more based on Amazon's algorithm. So we're just doing a negative exact match on that, that specific keyword there. And it's going to continually do more research in general, but that's, at a much lower bid than the broad match campaign. So it's not competing with the broad, ma broad match in that regard. Yeah. And similar again with the product targeting campaign, it functions very much the same way. You're gonna have your category campaign and your specific ASIN targeting campaign or groups within that campaign that are function in a similar manner. So everything we've talked about up to this point was if you recall the, one of the first slides we showed you, it was keyword research, launch campaign, and then as these things begin delivering, this is gathering data, right? This is making sure that those things are coming in, that we're getting that data, that we're knowing where the impressions are going, where our money is going, and where Amazon's showing our products to our customers, both where we expect and where we don't expect. So that's the initial process to set this up. Now, what we want to do is talk about what you do when you've got that data. And I realize there's still a lot of questions about, you know, campaign structure, negative phrase. We will bring those up at the end. We're going to circle back to those. But I want to make sure that on the, the you know, smooth level that we've got this stuff talked about because all of the refinements where you're going to see the big results, this is the magic. This is where that's going to come from because anybody can take that campaign structure and set it up exactly like that and launch it and then let it collect data. 
All you have to do to let something collect data is to log in and make sure it's delivering. That's what you have to do. That's all you do to collect the data. What you do with that data is what makes your campaigns great. So I've listed out here a bunch of problems or a bunch of opportunities to improve that you can find on a given campaign. So we've let it run for X amount of days, X amount of dollars, you know, X amount of clicks, whatever your threshold is. For reference, we tend to use per keyword because we're monitoring this pretty consistently. You know, anywhere between five and 15 clicks, depending on the category, or anywhere you know, from several thousand impressions, or if none of those things happen beforehand, we set a threshold of time. So, you know, two days or two weeks, three weeks, whatever that is, right? We want to make sure that we're setting the thresholds. When you've reached that threshold of data, now it's time to refine that. If you're looking at your campaigns and your advertising cost of sale, another way to think about that is average cost of sale is too high. What you need to look at is, okay, this is high, right? This number is high. Are you getting sales? That's the first consideration to make because if you're getting sales, but your campaign costs are high in the beginning, you're in a good spot because you're moving revenue. So you're going to bring up your organic sales and you know that your keywords are relevant to your audience and that they're buying from that, that your page is set up to work with those keywords and that things are going. So if your A cost is high, but you also have sales, that's a good point to be at then you just have to work on lowering your A cost. The first suggestion I would make for that is looking at your exact match campaign and looking at each individual term. What is your, what is your A cost? This particular term is 700%. Lower it down, lower it down pretty aggressively. This one is 150. Okay, so lower that down, you know, 10 cents, 20 cents. Tweak those things the other way, right? Tweak them down. If you're getting a really high A cost in the exact match campaign where most of your sales are coming from, tweak those bids down because you're getting sales, you're relevant. Now we just have to play with what you're paying for the traffic because that's really what, what's at stake here. With a high A cost, you're paying too much for the traffic. But if you have sales, it's still good traffic. The traffic itself isn't wrong. It's make bringing it in. If your A cost is high and you don't have good sales, if you don't have a lot of good data, if you haven't converted, there's a couple of other things that can be kind of you know, wrong there. So I want to circle back with that after we've gone through number four so that we can really kind of see what else could be in there. But if you have sales and your ACOS is high, tweak your bids down. If you don't have sales, keep listening. We're gonna circle back to that. What do you do if your impressions are low, right? So I've ran this campaign for the longest out threshold that is required, right? The two weeks, three weeks, I've hit my time threshold. That's what I call a default threshold. And I haven't met any other criteria, but I've hit my time. Okay, well, it's been this long. After this long, I have not got the impressions I've needed. I haven't got the play. You know, I'm standing out on the corner with my megaphone, but nobody has come to look at my Girl Scout cookies. It's not working. What's going on? If your impressions are low, what that means is that Amazon's not displaying your ad, not that people aren't clicking it, right? It's got nothing to do with people are clicking it. It's got nothing to do with people are buying it. It's that Amazon's not displaying your ad, which means that they have determined that your product is not relevant or that you're in a very competitive category where ad age means a lot more than some other places. So if your impressions are not good, the first thing I would say is look at your keywords and take a common sense step back and say, are these keywords what makes sense for this product? And then if it is, ask yourself, am I using these keywords in my back end or in my listing? Because that can help you improve your relevancy score for deliverability. If your impressions are low, the, the buzzword that you're having an issue with is deliverability. Your ads are not delivering. So that's what you have, to, you have to troubleshoot. Why is Amazon not thinking that these things are relevant? Why is it not showing these to the customers? Sometimes if your impressions are too low and you've hit that threshold, 
It may be that the particular keyword you've chosen, if you've chosen to go with a lot more longer tail keywords than normal, those things may simply not be getting enough, enough searches. The search volume on those words may not be high enough to trigger your impression threshold. So that's why, why you may say, okay, my impressions are low. So if your keywords are very, really too specific, too long tail, that can also cause some low impressions. So we're looking at click-through rate here, right? If you are looking at a campaign and your CTR determines now that people are seeing my ad, how many of them are actually clicking through to what I'm selling? And believe it or not, when we're working with numbers like this, you're going to see very small percentages. Ads everywhere, even on Amazon, where it's a cost per click platform, whether they tell you or not, they're essentially charging you in some form or fashion per thousand eyeballs. So per thousand people who are watching that, that's what it's going to break down to. Your click-through rate is a number of how many people are clicking on your ad from those thousand eyeballs and going to your page. This is what's going to control your sessions. If you're like, man, I'm running these ads, but I'm not seeing any more traffic and my ads are delivering, this is the culprit. If you're like, I'm running these things, I'm getting clicks, you know, I'm getting some clicks, but not a lot. I'm, I got a million impressions last week. What's going on? Your click-through rate is low. Now, if I recall, this isn't shown in, in the campaign settings, this isn't turned on by default, but you can toggle that on to have Amazon actually show you what your click-through rate for the campaign is. And I would highly advise you do that because if you don't know what it is, you don't know what it's gonna be. Um, now, obviously the next kind of question is, what's a great number for a click-through rate, right? I would say, and believe it or not, anything between one, one and 1.5% 1 is pretty decent. Anything above two is absolutely insane. So think about that from a logical perspective. If two people out of a thousand are clicking on your ad, it's doing a remarkable job. And I know that may not sound really great. Like in grade school, if I got a 2%, I'd have went home and I would have been punished with corporal punishment. I'd have got a, so I got, I got a switch, I got a beaten, right? That's what it is. But if you're looking at, you know, a, a two, a 2%, 2% of that, that's actually really good. So when you're trying to change your click-through rate, you're looking for small differences because these numbers are going to be played out through everyone who's seeing your list, your ads. So if you have a million impressions, which in some categories is not far-fetched to get, we've actually seen some of our clients get over a million impressions for their campaigns a week, right? It's not that crazy. If, you're, if you improve that number by half a percent, that generates you thousands of sessions. And that obviously means a lot more sales. So how you fix this, if it is low, the primary thing that controls your click-through rate is your main image, right? Because on normal keyword searches, not brand ads, not, not you know, pack campaigns, on your keyword searches, that's what's going to control your click-through rate is your main image. If your main image looks like crap, if it's not what your customers are expecting, if the branding is bad, you will directly see that reflected in your CTR. And doing a split test of a new image that's maybe sharper, has a different take, goes from a different angle, has different lighting, you would be amazed how many things can improve click-through rate ever so slightly and make a big difference to your campaigns. That's hey Charles, come first. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm just gonna cut you off there real quick. I I, I want to speak a little bit about the importance of uh, here. Let me see if I can reclaim host. I want to go on camera here. Um, yeah, like your main image is literally the gateway to your listing, and my students in this group have heard me saying this a thousand times. So, uh, but for those that are not in my course, it's we've literally seen sales double from one simple main image change. Can you, can you just like, can you please absorb that right now? Your sales literally doubling from one main image change. But the, the question a lot of people have is like, um, I don't know what I should change it to. So the hack that I like to use, it's two parts. Number one is I uh, take a look at 
my top competitors, the ones that are selling the best. And I take a look at their angles and I just emulate what they've done. Like they're the top competitors. They've been around for a long time. I'm just going to assume that they know what they're doing. So if they know what they're doing, I'm just going to, you know, cop emulate what they've done. Uh, another thing is when you guys are doing main images, always make sure to turn up the sharpness and the contrast. Uh, tell that to your graphic designer. Uh, sorry, not the contrast, the uh, saturation, because it makes the color pop out more. You really want the color to pop as much as possible. And then the other one is called PicFu. So pick F U. Uh, that is a great website for you to do instant split testing. So if you want to do a split test between your competitors, images versus yours and then just be like hey which one of these would you choose to click on um it's you know you're gonna get some really good feedback and that way it will give you a um you know a direction to say hey like my main image is not good enough or my main my main image is good enough so when charles is speaking about your main image not only does that have to do with your you know your click-through rate which is really important when it comes to P P ppc if no one's clicking on your ads, then hey, that's pretty bad. And more importantly, it also has to do with just your overall sales, right? So um, yeah, just wanted to chime in here and, and talk about the main image real quick. Yeah, yeah, it's it's massive for sure. Um, yeah, pick through so, is something that we'll be talking about more here in a second. We actually use that for PPC. yeah, we do it as well. Yeah, so we'll get to that in a second. Ads. But yeah. Um, so one of the other things that can go wrong in your troubleshooting is. I have, and you'll normally see this with a high A cost. I have a high A cost and I have no sales, right? So I have very little actual inventory moving. You know, we're talking about, I moved maybe 10 units. God, what's wrong? My, I'm 10 units, my A cost is 10,000%, right? Some ridiculous numbers. You're gonna know right away that the problem with that is I have no sales, my A cost is out the window as long as the keywords you're looking at are delivering, Amazon at least considers them relevant. That doesn't mean your customers do, but Amazon considers it relevant, which is a pretty good place to start with, okay, maybe these keywords are applicable. What the most likely outcome is, what the most likely problem of this is, is that your listing is trash. If you look at your listing, it is a sales page. We've all been to sales pages. We've all seen you know, the, webinar, the webinar talk, the, the buy my product, the, the before and after stories, the case studies, we've all seen it. That is a sales page. The only purpose of your product page is to make a sale. That is its job. You can check whether or not it's doing its job by going under your account and looking at reports, business reports, detailed page sales and traffic by ASIN, unit session percentage. That is your general your general conversion rate, how many people out of 100 will buy your product. If that number is low, it's going to absolutely decimate your PPC and your sessions in general, both organic and paid. Now, if we take an example of a 10% conversion rate, that means translated 10 sessions are required to make one sale. If your product is $15 and you're paying $1.50, you've got a 100% A cost. And those numbers are actually fairly reasonable for per click, $1.50 a click. And most categories, $15, 100% A cost. Before you even get to Amazon fees, before you get to your product costs, anything. But if you're really on point, you know what the customer wants to buy, you've got them to their mindset, you put in the stories, they know what they're getting, they know it's gonna solve their problem. And that's converting at 20 or 30%, even at 20%, right, 10 to 20, it's a 10% jump. You're still failing in grade school, right? In business, these are significant numbers. 10% jump. Instead of requiring you to get 10 clicks, it's required you to get five. So instead of spending $15, you're spending 750, which means that there's a chance that your product, instead of losing money on every sale, is now profitable. A lot of the problems I see in a PPC campaign come down to, the listing itself was crap. And part of this, you know, when we were talking to Tom and doing this, what I was really excited to hear from him is he spends a lot of time talking to you guys about listings, how to get people to buy, putting that together, making sure that it's really important, talking about how important the main image is. 
it's really important that when people come to your sales page, they buy the product. If they're not, no matter what you do to bring them there, it's not going to help you. And you're going to see that in the campaigns. No sales, cost is high. The problem is your content on your page. The problem is your conversions. So after you've kind of gone through all of this and you're like, okay, I know what either isn't working or you find out what's working least, effect least effectively and you try to improve that. So let's say you are a unicorn right out the gate, everything starts firing up. You're hitting, you know, first, first couple of weeks, 25, 30% ACOS. That's well below your target. You're making money. Your sales are going off. You're like, okay, great. I have this data now. It seems to be going. Should I just leave it running? No. Refine. Double down on what's working. If you look at these numbers and say, hey, this is going really well, but I have 100,000 impressions. My click-through rate is only 0 0.08. Well, maybe if I change my main image, I split test that. I do a split test. I do pick boo, and then I see which one works there, and I flip it over, and I'm like, okay, so I can do it here as well, right? I can try this image versus the old image. If that rate goes up, then you can see that was the lowest hanging fruit to optimizing your campaigns. Then you're going to see your costs come down a little bit. Your sessions are going to go up, and so because your sessions went up, your sales are going to go up and you continually do this process all the time, you always look for who's the weakest man on the team. Is the weakest man on the team your impressions? Is it your click-through rate? Is it your conversions? Is it the number of sessions you're getting? Where is the weakest man? Prop him up, because if you prop him up, all of the other guys on their team are gonna level up, they're gonna perform a little better, your costs are gonna get better, and then you can have choices to make, strategic choices about what you're gonna do next. So after, you know, after that first refinement, you've done that once, twice, maybe three times, and your campaigns are starting to deliver now, right? You have a really solid base. You have campaigns that are doing what you want them to do. They're profitable. Your rank is going up because you're selling more units and more people are seeing your products. Things are rising. How do you add that extra layer onto it, right? Because up until now, we've just been talking about keyword campaigns. But Amazon's always adding new options, always adding new abilities to get more money, to make, help people show your products. What other things can you do once you've got that base? Now, can you utilize that data for to help push your product out? Now, one thing we've got is uh, defense campaigns. Is This isn't our term. There's uh, several industries, who, industry, several companies who use that term, but it's very valid. You know, on any page on Amazon, there's a spot that says sponsored products related to this item. And those are actually people using targeted campaigns, targeted ads to show their products within your listing or within the top listings in your area. Remember, we said that the rank is based on how many people are looking at your page and your sales. So if they're advertising their products in your listing, and a couple of people click off, let's say you get five people a day that click off, you've lost twice. You've lost potentially five sales of the people who left. And your opponent, your competitors have gained five. So your sales, the difference between you is now 10, it's not five. So then you've lost a lot more than you think you have. In addition, there's only three ways on Amazon in general to make more money. You can show your product to more people, you can get more people who see to buy, or you can sell more products to the same people who are buying, right? Cart size, increase your cart size, increase your unit orders, what's your average unit order, push it up. This first one here, defense campaigns, really helps you hammer in on that. It's about showing your products, this only works if you have more than one product, right? Five to seven is ideal. You have those products that are in the same niche, you're selling a gummy bear, a gummy seal, a gummy phone, a gummy kid, whatever you're selling, right? You're putting those all on the same listing and you're saying, okay, I'm going to tell Amazon through ACE and targeting, PAT, P-A-T campaigns. You're gonna put those directly inside of your listings so that your competitors cannot step in and hijack your customers. They can't come in, say, oh, look at my shiny image, click, they're gone. If they click off, they're going to one of your other listings. They're seeing another one of your offerings. The huge benefit of this is not only that you protect your customers, 
is that over time, as Amazon begins to see, hey, people really like this product with this product, and they're buying them together, they're adding them to cart, they're getting interactions, Amazon will create for you a box called Frequently Bought Together. And they're going to put that one-on-one -on -one right beside each other. So now some of your customers are going to have, all of your customers will have the option, but some will take up the option to buy two of your products. So instead of having to do a bundle for everything you have on all these different listings, Amazon will build an upsell. It works in the other direction too. So you can, yes, we said ASIN targeted ads, the same way you're defending your traffic, you can steal your competitor's traffic. You can advertise your products inside of their listing. And when Amazon sees, hey, there's some interaction between these, they'll build that box, but it won't be your competitor's products. So they'll have one of your competitor's products and one of yours. If you ever look on your listing and see that Amazon's attempting to sell your competitor's product along with yours, it's a very annoying process. You look at that and you feel like they're reaching their hand inside your cookie jar and taking from you. If you can do that on your top competitors, the number one, the number two guy is having your product and remember their page gets maybe 10 times, 12 times as many sessions as yours. Amazon suggesting your product to their customers. So you've got found sales, you have found money and that frequently bought together box is something that occurs organically that you don't have to keep paying for. So once this gets set up, it's literally just additional sales from the top guy and it's helping you move up. Now we have another way to do this is category targeting and I'll turn that over to Nick for a minute if he wants to talk about that. Yeah, I'll let you get a sip of water for a second. You've done a lot of talking. <laughs> um, yeah, so the category targeting again, like I mentioned before, it's kind of like an auto campaign, but it's pretty cool because it's, it's not just you're targeting your category and you're gonna target all the products in that category. It's not just as simple as that. You could have multiple category targets in this group, say within your product targeting campaign, okay? So you can, I don't know if you, hopefully you guys have played around with this, but if not, um, you can go in there and you can actually refine the target. So um, say, so you pick your target and you can say, well, I want it, my price of my product is, $20, well, I want to target products only with a price higher than mine, or I want to target products with a, only a star rating that's lower than mine. So that way I can, you know, be more likely when I land on their advertise on their page, I actually get the sale. But, you know, on the other hand, you might want to just go ahead and set up multiple dip, different types of refinements because sometimes you never know your, your product might just have better images, et cetera, et cetera. And even though your product is priced higher, you still might want to try to advertise for those too. And you could set up two different types of targets at the same time. And the reason we save this for this page here kind of scaling is because sometimes it's just not a good idea to run these right off the bat, depending on your budget. It might be better in the beginning to start with just ASIN targets that you've researched and then add in the category targets later because they can kind of blow out your ACOS pretty, um, pretty in a big way if you're, not, if you're not careful, if you don't stay on top of them. So you just have to be aware of that or just watch the bidding on those carefully. Um, but yeah, it's an excellent way to scale and to continually feed in new ASINs to that ASIN target campaign and really hammer on those once you find ones that convert well. I want to take a couple of the, the questions here because we obviously have some stuff for you guys. We want to talk about, you know, the, some other benefits, ways to scale the business, things like that. But I want to take some of the questions here in the chat. Um, you know, somebody said, David Meyerhoff says, ASIN targeted sales does not violate Amazon TOS. No, not only does it not violate Amazon TOS, Amazon created the ability to target that themselves within the system as a way for them to make additional money. It's 100% within terms of service. Um, nothing we've talked about here is gray hat. Nothing is against terms of service. Everything we talk about is 100% you know, on, on the up and up, and you're never going to have to worry about any kind of action being taken because all of this is stuff that Amazon themselves have said, this is allowed. We've allowed you to do this. Yep. Yep. Um, so let's see a couple. We have a couple of other ones about the targeting. 
All right, it looks like we don't have a, uh, others about the targeting, but let's take some of these other questions here about you know what we talked about so far, because it's been a lot. Somebody said about color variations and product grouping. Remember, when you're grouping things together, if the product's similar, put it together. And you're asking, well, wouldn't the keyword, you know, red, red, red gummy seal, wouldn't that be more relevant than blue gummy seal? If you have both of those keywords in the campaign and the, the prospect, right, the guy who's searching, the customer is searching blue gummy seal, Amazon will display blue for you, even if they're in the same campaign. So don't worry about color variations. That is the perfect example of when to put these things together. Now, if I uh, run a few variations on one campaign, I can win just one spot, right? So if I want to win a few spots on the front page, I need to run them on a separate campaign. So the answer is, yeah, your campaign when it's bidding can win one placement. That is the question. But if you look at this from a high level, if you are, let's say you're ranked, you know, number three, and the first five appear above the fold, you're ranked number three, you're winning one of the sessions. So you have two of the five possible spots above the fold where most of the sales are made in order to show up. If you're trying to win an additional spot off that one customer, you're paying for them to see you twice and you can, and you're paying twice. They're seeing you three times, but you're only making one sale. So even if that campaign does well, you still, whatever displayed cost is there, if you're consistently winning one and two, you have to add 50% onto that cost. So then most of those sales, even if they would be effective, cost-wise, they're not gonna be effective anymore. In addition, there's something called attentional, you know, kind of a, attentional blindness. So the ad itself is gonna have, unless your other ad, is displaying a different product that has a different main image, the customer is gonna see one, two, it's gonna be the same product. They're not, we as human beings are trained to tune out things that we've seen before and things that we see all of the time. Perfect example is you could not tell me how many trees were on the drive from your work to your house. You drive that a million times a day, but you just say they were trees you probably couldn't even tell me what was eventful and I doubt you would even remember every time you drove to work. We're trying to forget those things and not even pay attention to them. If you're showing up multiple times in that front page with everything being the same, odds are people aren't, it's going to show, but they're not internally gonna process that. Our brains are trained to ignore it. Yeah, you're gonna kinda, and yeah, to expand on that, like you were saying, you're going, if you have like different variations showing on page one, at best, you're gonna get people like clicking into each one, clicking out of each one. You're gonna spend a lot more. It'd be better to just have a really great listing with a really great image, get them in there, and then you have your variations there that they can click through and select the one they want. Yeah. Okay, and then just hammer on that, yeah. With your PPC. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, questions about, you know, what happens if we're kind of toward, toward the top? Why don't we get through, do you want to get through these last couple of points or? Um, I kind of, I wanted to kind of stay, you know, answer some, a couple of these okay. and then, you know, then we'll uh, continue on to the next one. Okay. So I already have an exact ranking campaign, Victor asked, with my top five keywords in it. That's driving most of my sales. Excellent. The exact match should drive most of your sales. If I want to have more keywords, should I put them in the same campaign or is it best to have one exact match for each keyword? You want to put them in the same campaign. Here's the reason. Budget and deliverability are directly affected, not budget, sorry, deliverability is directly affected by your ad age, how old that campaign is, and your budget, right? Similar to Facebook, if anyone knows anything about Facebook advertising, you don't get a lot of play unless you're spending at least $20 a day on some of these campaigns. And you get a lot more bang for your buck on some of these things if you're doing over 100. Similarly with Amazon, they want to display people who are spending more money. You are a smaller fish to them. If your daily budget, I don't even, I don't even believe you could set it this low anymore, was $5 a day, right? At one point in time, you could. But if, you're, if it's $5, you're not a big fish to them. You're not a priority deliverable. And if you have a bunch of campaigns split out and that campaign budget is only a couple of dollars, or you have a bunch of different exact match campaigns for that, it's not pooling your budget and those ads 
are all gonna be different ages with the one that's the oldest delivering most. If you put those new keywords into that same campaign, what you're effectively doing is helping that ad age show to that new keyword. Okay. Do you also use negative phrase and broad campaigns for the keywords that you bid on on phrase? Yeah, if you look at that screenshot, that's exactly what we're doing. The phrases get negative in the broad, and then the exact match gets negative up the, up the chain, except in the exact match, so that each level, it's kind of forcing it out. And do you need a negative exact match keywords and broad campaign as well as phrase? You know, we just talked about that. Yeah, you want to make sure you're negative exact matching in every level above the one you're currently in. And it's actually negative phrase matching in the broad. Yeah, yeah. negative phrase matching negative, there. That's a tongue twister. Say that 10 times yeah. fast. Negative phrase yeah. matching in the broad. <laughs> Trying to explain all those, how they're negative exact matching and saying campaign and match over and over again. Oh my God. Yeah. The advertising funnel is a step-by-step -step structure. Once you hit a threshold for a keyword, it moves to the next level or it gets, you know, turned down to two cents and ignored, right? So if a keyword does not perform, if it doesn't get the impressions, dump. If it doesn't, you know, get the, if it doesn't get sales and the exact or the phrase, dumped, right? So it's all, it's a pyramid. And as you trigger each level, it goes up and up. My product has a long keyword, but high search volume. Should I choose another product to get, or ch should I choose another keyword to get better results? Um, that, the, that depends on your, your cost per click, right? Because just because a keyword has a large search volume, that doesn't mean that you have to bid. There's this misconception that you have to be paying the most. You don't have to be paying the most to show up. So if you are paying, if the suggested bid is 450, that doesn't mean if you're not bidding 450, you're not gonna get impressions. If you bid $2, you could still get impressions. And in fact, in one very rare case, what that actually did was helped us discover something entirely different. But you could then show up for that keyword you just show up after the people who have bid more. In some cases, that can work to your advantage because if you're bidding more on a product or if you're bidding less on a product, you're gonna show up after everyone else's budget has gone. And usually those budgets will end, especially for new sellers, they'll end their budgets from my experience from around five to seven at night. Customers start shopping later than that. And depending on your product, if your product only begins to deliver at let's say midnight, because everybody who's bidding higher than you has stopped bidding on that, or that campaign has reached that. If your product converts better after a certain time of day, then that could actually work to your advantage. So don't say just because, you know, these keywords have a lot of volume, should I choose better keywords? Look at the cost, right? We're, we're getting more keywords, but we're also fine tuning how much we're spending on those keywords. All right. See here, we're supposed to leave auto campaigns running all the time. Yes, because as we negative exact match things in the automatic campaign, they begin to spend less and less and less money. They'll start generating less and less impressions and Amazon will have to show them to more and more arcane terms, which you can then test through the process. That's exactly the point. Over time, that campaign may not do barely anything. And when it does, you know that a significant market event has taken place. Think of the structure of one keyword per campaign. We already talked about that. You know, will you be showing us how to place our product inside competitors' listings? So that's, a, that's an ASIN targeting campaign. Um, you can actually, there's any number of guides that you can do to look at that. Um, it's literally, there's directly inside of Amazon. It's uh, just a different campaign type. Nick, if you wanna talk a little bit about that and then we'll kind of go to the next slide there. Okay. Yeah, so setting up the ASIN targeting campaign, that's just, you, you set that up just as you would in the same platform as the sponsored product keyword campaign. And you just insert your specific ASINs that you've researched and set your bidding. And yeah, it, Amazon pretty much walks you through the process in Seller Central. Um, but yeah, there's, there's tons of basic tutorials on how to do that. We won't be digging into that specifically today, but yeah, it's something you can shoot us a message about in the future if you need help with it, for sure. 
But yeah, so yeah, we definitely want to get to these next couple things as far as scaling because they're really important. We want, I wish we could really go into these because they are super important, especially the sponsored brand ads now that Amazon has allowed um, you to download the search term reports for those, which is, that's, that's amazing because it's been so, for so long, you just could not really see what data was doing what in those, but now you can. Yeah, sponsored brand ads are big. You may not think that your brand is big, but if you search on Amazon for your brand name, there's a lot of customers who may actually do that. And I suggest to everyone set up a campaign, a sponsored brand campaign for your own keywords. What you'll find is that many times competitors are bidding on your keywords. Amazon is a brand equalizer. You are just as big of a threat to the guy on Nike as you are to, well, he's Nike pulled off the platform, but you were when they were on there as where you are to the page on seven, right? Rank is what matters. Presentation is what matters. Perception is what matters. People who are going to search for general products are looking for those things. Every brand is a potential competitor, regardless of how long they've been in the business. Your name can be worth more than you think. So running your brand ads, running a campaign that's just your brand keywords on a headline ad can mean a ton of sales. In some cases, we've literally seen it jump sales 10 to 12% all by itself for the overall campaign from that running. You can also do those type of things on other brands. If somebody has a number one, a number two, a number three product in your category, they're not bidding on their own brand keywords. That means that those keywords are probably gonna be pretty cheap. And when somebody searches their brand, your headline can come up. And because it shows up first, you have the ability to not only bring them to your product page, but as of two weeks ago, you can redirect those ads to your storefront. Amazon specifically allowed this. They allowed you to take those, those brand ads and direct them to your storefront. So now the customer is shopping only from your products. And many of these people won't even realize they'll be like, oh, well, this is a selection and they'll pick something from there. So you've eliminated all that competition through that research phase. It's a, it's a great little tactic that I would recommend everybody get to. Yeah, sponsored brands can be absolutely huge. Um, kind of the yeah, final let one. Me, let me just add to that real quick. So one of the cool things about that, since you can download the search term report, it can behave just like all that we explain with the sponsored product ads. You can set the sponsored brand ups, ads up the exact same, same way and run your keywords through a funnel in a very similar fashion. And on top of that, we, we want to make sure our sponsored brand ad is set up as best we can from the start, because it's not something where like, once you set the headline ad, you can just change it. No, it, once you set it, it's, it's set unless you start a brand new one. So we want to start off with the best headline ad headline we can in the headline ad or sponsored brand ad. And we want the best photo. So that's where we like to get a copywriter and we have them uh, write out a few headline ads and, and we take all the photos we have and we run those through PicFu, similar to testing your main image for your listing. And we find out which headline ad is gonna work the best, which photo is gonna work the best for the headline ad and split test that. So we know there's no variables missing that we're like, why isn't this working? We at least, we know we have everything as best we can and we can just really focus on the keywords and optimizing the campaigns in that regard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the final thing is some of you guys may have heard like, you're like, wow, this seems like a lot of work to be moving that many keywords, 20, 30 campy work keywords across four campaigns. Or if you add sponsored headlines, you know, or brand brands, brands to store defense campaigns and ASIC campaigns, in some cases, it could be up to eight campaigns per product group. It seems like an awful lot of work. It is an awful lot of work. And if you don't do it, then you're leaving money on the table. You're derailing your campaigns. You're stopping your business from growing. In order to solve that, what I found is that for business owners, we're all people. We all don't do things because we get too busy. We get overwhelmed. We don't know where to start. We don't do those things that we know that we should do. In order to fix that, you really have kind of only one choice. You can either make that your number one priority and focus all your time on that, which means you're not doing other things like launching new products, 
or you can take that responsibility off yourself. You can either hire a team to do that. You can, you know, you can hire an agency such as ours. You can hire an individual that you train like an employee, or you can use automation. But the fifth point here toward automation is really remember that as a human being, you're not going to do all of the things that you need to do. And you are only accountable as a business owner to yourself and to the people who depend on you. But if things are going well, you will hold yourself less accountable and your growth will suffer. So make sure with all the stuff we've talked about, you are really taking the advantage of the fact that we live in a digital world and you can hire someone, either an agency or you know, someone to do it manually or use a tool that can help you solve that problem. Because once everything begins getting optimized, the human being involved in the process that's not answerable is going to be the guy who holds your results back. And most oftentimes, that's you, the business owner. So kind of with that said, you know, if you guys are like, hey, all of this sounds great. You know, there's a ton of questions. I've learned a lot from like, what do we do? And we, I see Q&A questions there. Definitely going to keep going, get going back to those, right? But if you're like, okay, this sounds interesting. I like your PPC strategy. You know, you've heard some of the results that Tom has gotten. We've also got a ton of other results such as we had a client who was number one in card games on Amazon, all of Amazon and did over 1.8 million in December, right? We've had people, we've doubled their sales in 60 days. We've had my favorite testimonial, a uh, gentleman stepped in within one week, we had him making more sales at less of a cost than he did the entire month before, right? There's all kinds of things that you can do if this stuff is applied properly. If you are looking to have somebody work on this for you, if you're looking to know that you're never going to have to touch your PPC again, that this is going to be handled, that your growth is going to be maintained, that you're going to run these ads profitably, and that your sales are going to continue to scale up and you're going to be on the curve. That's the biggest advantage that you get with working with us is that knowing that all of this is going to be done. You do not have to worry about it. You can log in at any point in time and see my A cost is this. I've made this. My organic sales have grown here and you don't have to ever watch another hour long webinar about how to run PPC. You can focus on other things, launching another product, launching a new wing of the business, expanding out into retail. I believe Tom, you just did another, uh, another podcast about building a brand off Amazon. Those things are excellent moves. They take additional time. So if you're looking to get PPC off your plate and not have to look all those at all those numbers all the time, that is one of the biggest things we offer. Um, in addition, now it feels good. It feels good to know that your account's growing, that your numbers work. It feels really good to be able to tell somebody, I started off with my inventory, you know, and now I have to double, triple my orders because I'm moving so much. And when you think about it, knowing that 100,000, you made 100,000 sales means that you made at least that many products into the hands of customers. Over 100,000 people saw your product, they liked what you had, and they wanted to buy it that feels good and that grows your business and your brand. Whenever somebody buys your product on Amazon or off Amazon, you have an, a chance to grow your brand, to grow your expertise and to grow your presence on Amazon, off Amazon, on e-com, off e-com and just in the world in general. So that's one thing that getting your product into the hands of more customers brings you. Kind of the final part is we have this, as you can see, down to a science. I said, on the previous slides, if this, then this, if this, then this, if this is a problem, this is a problem. This is a diagnostic manual we go through to fix this thing. There is no guessing. I told you if your click through rate is low, this is the reason. These are proven time and time again across do dozens of counts and millions of dollars worth of sales, guys. If you have these problems, there are solutions that are one for one on how to fix that. And those solutions are things that we implement all the time and we can help you implement with your business and your PPC so that you continue to grow. I'd say if, you're, if you are interested in working with an agency like us, I'd say that you should have at least 30,000 in monthly sales. What we do is not cheap, and I wanna make sure that the tactics I'm doing are really going to bring you value, and you have to have some traction to get started, right? If you are doing $0 a month, and I bring you an extra thousand sessions, you're still gonna make zero dollars a month. You're making no sales. So I wanna make sure you've got the baseline stuff covered. 
you've worked with Tom and his team, you've got your listings up, you've got your reviews done, you've, you've got some traction, you're moving along, and you, you're making at least 30,000 in monthly sales. Uh, number one problem our clients have consistently, and Tom also had this problem, and I told him when he started working with us, and he laughed at me and said, we'll see, well, everybody says we'll see, he ran out of inventory. Most of our clients will run out of inventory because they do not expect the ads and the deliverability and the PPC to do, to do as well as it does. If you have a great advertising system, you'll always sell more units. Make sure you can scale up your units. If your aunt is sewing 20 handmade wooden dolls a month, that's a great product. I, you know, good for your aunt, good for you for having a family business. This isn't for you because I'm going to take those 20 and then you're going to have to sew 200 a day. And then poor aunt Franz is going to quit. She's not going to be able to go. She's not going to be able to give you your products. She's not going to be able to fulfill that demand. And the number one reason that crashes new businesses, unsustainable growth. Number one reason that puts you out of business. If you cannot scale your production, if you cannot get more product, if you cannot ship more, do not contact any agency like us or us, because what we're going to do is we're going to sell your product. And if you don't have any to sell, you're not going to see a return. Finally, very upfront about our pricing. We have a sliding scale retainer. The more money we make your accounts, we're going to scale up your organic because my end goal is to make all of this PPC movement less than 20% of your monthly sales. And I want 80% to be those big free sales that come from Amazon from being on page one, from being number one, two, or three. My whole goal with PPC is to do that at a profit. We want to make sure that we incentivize ourselves and you to scale that direction. So we charge $1,500 a month starting, and we charge that up to $50,000 a month in revenue. And it goes up from there. As we make you more money, we get paid a little more so that we're all incentivized to work better together. If you can't afford $1,500 a month, if you don't see yourself and you don't want to scale up past $50,000, $150,000, $300,000, and those are actually our breakpoints that we have a plan to scale people through. Again, don't contact us because you're better off doing this yourself at a small scale than really cranking it up to the next level. If on the other hand, all that sounds good, you wanna scale that up, you have the inventory, you've got some stuff going, you can book a call directly, directly to talk to us. On that call, I'm gonna look at your account, I'm gonna look at your metrics to make sure that everything I'm doing is gonna work for you. I'm gonna take a look at your conversions. I'm gonna look at your reviews. And we're gonna go very deep into this process to find out what exactly we can do for you and how quick we can scale you up, not only to the front page of Amazon, but to scale up the amount of money you're gonna make every two weeks. So you just go to talk to SA, just talk to SA.com. And right there is a calendar link, that's all there is. You put that in there and you can book a time to talk to me directly. So again, on that call, we're going to strategize what we can do for you. And we have about 160 people seeing this on webinar. You know, Tom's gonna upload it on his YouTube after we're done, and it's probably gonna go out a couple of other places. So we're going to get quite busy over the next coming weeks. If you wanna take advantage of the fact that things are opening up, people are buying things, people are going back to work, you really want to make sure that you're advertising. I implore you, even if you don't talk to me, take some of the stuff we're talking about, start it yourself, start running some of the stuff yourself. If you want to throw gas on the fire though, talk to sa.com. You can book a time directly to talk to us right on Zoom, just like we are now. It's super simple, face-to-face, one-on-one, and I want to make sure that everybody who's interested actually gets on here and gets a spot to talk to us because again, things are getting quite busy for us and there's going to be a lot of people on here who want to take us up on that. So let's go through some of this other, uh, some of this other Q and a here. And again, it's always, you can just leave that there, Nick. Um, so we have, does a low conversion rate, again, this is a diagnostic question, right? This is one of those things. It's down to a science. Does a low conversion rate for a keyword in PPC influence the organic ranking for that keyword? If yes, would you pause low re conversion rate keywords in order to avoid decrease in organic rank? So I used to think for a very, very, very long time that your organic rank was partly predicated 
on your conversion rank rate for a particular word. That has been proven from almost every software company, people who have access to tens of millions of dollars of data and thousands of accounts to not be true. The primary things that rank your account are page views and sales. As long as you're making a baseline of revenue, it's not going to hurt your account. Now, does a low conversion rate for a keyword influence your organic sales? I'd say you're looking at that from too much of a number perspective. Remember, we're selling our products to actual customers. And those customers are searching for that keyword because they're looking for that item or that solution. So if you're looking at, well, if somebody finds the word creatine organically, excuse me, organically or from a PPC term, will that influence the solution they're looking for? No, we've just presented that term to them by cutting the line to advertise. So it's not gonna influence the organic ranking for that keyword. However, if you see it's low, then what you know is that people who are looking for creatine aren't resonating with your content. So then you need to go back and think, why are they not resonating for my content? What kind of things do they not have done that they wanna have done? What questions do they have that aren't being answered? What results do they want that are not being promised or proven to them? And once you fix those things, you'll find your conversion rate for that keyword goes up. Do you look at cannibalization of organic traffic? A keyword 10% A cost with a 20% you know, T cost looks profitable, but you might be better off without PPC at all. So this is something I hear a lot, but people way smarter than me have proven that it takes five impressions, right? We always hear the fortunes and the follow-up. For most brands, it takes five impressions before somebody gets kind of comfortable with them, especially if you're selling a premium product the more time somebody sees and takes in your content, the more likely they are to buy. So if you're running a different ad, let's say you have a headline ad and you're running a variation of a product and you have your main product, your main you know, offering there, all within the top five, you have three of those five spots available. You're taking up 60% of that traffic automatically and they're seeing three offerings from you. So they instantly start thinking, okay, these guys have a lot of products in this space. And going with that mindset, they begin clicking into it. What you may find is that you turn off those, those advertisings, your sales go down. And if you wanna move less units at more of a profit, that's a consideration. But as far as a cost, you know, the PPC cannibalizing the organic, no, I wouldn't think that's a big factor, no. My conversion is high, but I don't have enough traffic. What can I do? Remember that if your, or if your conversion rate is very high, but you don't have any traffic, um, you have to look at why. Is it a deliverability problem? So you're not relevant for the keywords you're showing. Most times what happens if you don't have any traffic is you're not running PPC. You're running a very low PPC bid, or you're running only on very long tail keywords. You're not trying to run on any of the high volume keywords. You can have a 10% A cost that only gives you four sales a month. Is that campaign technically by the numbers profitable? Yes, but it's not gonna make a difference for you and what you're trying to do. So if your conversion is high, too high, usually that means that you're not aiming at a broad enough audience. Why do you not negative exact match in a broad campaign? only negative phrase, we talked about that. You want a negative exact match through every level that's, been, you know, that's above the level that you're currently working on. You know, if the bidding, bidding and budget tiers are when launched, how do you decide which keywords are put into auto phrase broad exact at the start when you have no data? That's what we were talking about, Nigel, with the Cerebro. Look at what the market is actually doing. Look at what your competitors are ranking for look at what keywords make sense around your product. And then as you put those keywords in there, in broad, what you'll find is that if you put in, you know, gummy seal, that it will deliver to 20, 30, 40 other words. Now you have more words to test. You have related words that you see people are searching and you can put those in as keywords to push you up through the, through the area.
Um, somebody just asked one here. I want to skip down to the end because I think it was a good, good question. Uh, remember, put all these in the Q&A section. It says, is it better to cast a wider net or a deeper net? That entirely depends on where you're at. If you are trying to rank organically, cast a wider net because your goal is to move revenue through that listing. Just like Rankin Bank moves revenue through your listing, PPC can move revenue through your listing. If you're trying to rank at number one, you're trying to push up in a category that you know there's a lot of money at the top, it makes sense, cast a wide net. If you're close to the top already, if your category doesn't have a lot of sales, or if it's going to be prohibitively expensive to rank there, cast a deeper net. Pay more attention to sales going in, sales coming out, and the profit of the between. Um, I find my auto campaign would overspend on competing products even though I've lowered the bid and put specific ASINs in the negative match, matching exact. What do you do in this case? Auto campaigns are designed to spend your money. Amazon wants your cash. This is not new. They want to make their money. Bezos is going to be a trillionaire. Good for them, him. I have absolute respect for that. But my job is not to put your money in his pocket. So if your auto campaign overspends on competing products, what you need to do is look at your placement, right? That's kind of what you're missing. You could be increasing your bid can put you, give you better placement than lowering your bid. So if you look at your placement is 99% product pages or page five, six, seven, where products go to die, that placement's not getting you anywhere. And so you wanna look at where is Amazon spending that money? Where am I sh showing up? If your placement is good and it's still overspending, you say even though you've and put specific ASINs in the negative match. Yeah. Putting specific ASINs into the negative match <clears throat> is more a product targeting thing and if that's the case, you just change your deliverability target. Excuse me. I <laughs> need some yeah. water there, buddy. Oh, man. But I get, you guys don't know, I get so excited going on this. If you don't want to call with me, I'm going to, I'm going to, the half hour, I'm going to say, bam, 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 bam. I'm pretty much going to give away the farm and then be like, okay, so this is how I can help you. Do you want it or not? And then you You'll can go take forever. it all and run or not. Talk to SA.com. Let's go from the top. Carlos, can you explain what a headline ad is? Oh, yeah. So a headline ad, actually, Nick, do you want to just pull up Amazon? We'll do a search, just any search. Let's just do some real live data here. These are, this is real platform. This is US market. Let's just see what these people are looking at, right? Let's see real life today. This is a live presentation. We're going to use some live Amazon. Do you guys do uh, US PPC or do you guys do EU as well? Canadian market, EU? Uh, we do US, EU, CA, and UAE. Um, the most important thing is the market cap, right? So if the UAE doesn't have anything going for it, if you could make less than 30,000 in that market, probably don't want to launch there. Um, mm. I would recommend everybody stay out of Australia. It's a big, big mess. Their country's had a lot of problems, number one. And number two, the Amazon API hooks are different. So mm. most of the add-ons don't even work over there. Oh, interesting. Yeah. What, is the, what is the best PPC automation tool or which ones do you guys recommend if someone wants to do themselves? We have tried everything. For most of the people on this call who are in um, FBA, right, you're not in the vendor program. I would say that the one that fits our strategy closest would be Zon Tools because it's a very aggressive strategy that focuses on getting sales and refinement later. Mm -hmm. um, Celix was one that we've used. We've done Managed by Stats. We've done any number of platforms. But the one I would recommend software-wise would be Zon Tools. Cool. Now, it's not an out-of-the-box solution, right? You're going to need to put some time into learning it and talking to the guys who made it, but it is a very good um, pick. Nice. I'm, uh, I'm also testing out one right now called Wordtree. It's uh, created by my buddy uh, Dalton, so I'll keep you guys posted regarding that. Uh, Steven, you guys don't do DSP, right? We talked about this. No, we don't offer DSP currently, and for most, again, for most products, you have to have 35000 a monthly spend to qualify for that anyhow. Yeah. Jonathan, does VL Viral Launch have something similar to Helium 10 Cerebro? Yeah, they do. It's called uh, competitor intelligence. Um, so pretty much the same thing. You enter in your competitor's ASIN and it will pull up uh, where they're currently ranked for. And you can actually compare your ASIN with the competitor as well to have a very clear understanding of 
uh, seeing where they're currently winning for keywords and so on and so forth. Uh, what percentage of total total revenue do you recommend for Amazon sponsored ads? I think you guys said 20, right? Yeah, a mature account will get to 20% once you've ranked. As you're ranking, the further down you are in the rankings, the more percent's gonna come from your spot, your your revenue, your advertising, just yeah. because that's where most of your sessions are gonna come from. Yeah. I, w I will say though, like um, I think at the beginning of uh, uh, I think at the beginning of PBC, um, like even when you guys were taking care of one of my accounts, uh, the spend was actually crazy. Like it was like it was like we're losing money every single day, uh, and obviously for me, I don't want to lose money. I want to make money. But then at the beginning, you really just have to realize that the beginning it's very very hard for you to make money. Just like Rankin Bank, you have to do giveaways, but you got to think about the long term, right? So at the same time, I've seen some of my students basically literally putting like a budget of $5. Like Amazon's not going to show your ads for five bucks. Um, you're competing, like it's an auction, right? It's literally an auction. It's like, hey, you want to you wanna get this position, whatever, like it's pay to play, right? So um, you really need to trust the system, I think. Um, and, and, and yeah, that's super, super important. But at the very, very beginning uh, stages, especially your discovery phase of your keywords, be expected to lose money. You're not going to actually make yeah. money. But then once you find those money keywords, assuming that your product is well optimized, all your photos are great, you got great reviews, great main images, then that's where you go to the exact campaigns and you just want to bid fully for those because those are ones that are going to be making you money. So this, uh, to the guy who asked what a sponsored brand ad is, it's this headline right here. Yeah. So Carlos, the first top one, yeah. 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 That's, that's exactly what that is. That's where it shows. Um, you can run these either to your product page or as of, I believe, two weeks ago, you can run those to your storefront to where you can show them other products. Now, I don't know who this bulk supplement gentleman is, but I can tell you just uh, in general, in terms of branding, don't do the things he's done. <laughs> that's, that's what I would say. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty terrible brand, actually. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a pretty bad logo. <laughs> now I look at it, I'm like, what is that guy doing? Uh, Steven asks, do you do, do you do SB video ads? Have you found them effective? So as far as SB video ads, um, where I think the video is has been most helpful is within the product page because it really helps communicate to the customer who you already know made the right search and is looking for the product, why yours is better. Uh, we haven't played around with a lot of the ads in the other spaces, but those things are, it's always, you wanna make sure that the person watching the video is really interested in what you have first. Otherwise it becomes kind of like one of those videos where you go to a website and it begins playing and you're like, hold on, did I actually come here? Is this what I meant to watch? Cool. Um... When decreasing the bid for a keyword, the sponsor ad will go out from the first page. Are you paying just for the first page? No, it, PPC stands for pay-per-click. So every single time someone clicks in, into your ad, that's when you pay. You, you, well, it's not, he's, it's not he's necessarily- He's wrong though. Sorry? Um, he's, his question is, there's some truth to it. If you lower your bid, um, it's by a bid process, but there's more than one spot you can win. Right. So if you lower your bid, sometimes you will stop showing up top of search. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not that has an impact on your numbers, you just have to monitor and see how much is, of that is going to affect it. Typically, top of search is going to get you more sessions, but if your conversion isn't honed in, it's going to be more costly. Yeah. And on top of that, if even if you're you do bid super high, it still may not get you so, on page yeah. one if Amazon has seen you as not as good of a product as someone else. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, King, uh, a queen asked if, if I want to rank for a specific keyword, is it effective to put that keyword in an exact campaign? So kind of like with rank and bank, you know, we pick like a few keywords that we want to appear on page one for, right? Like we already pick the keywords and we just do a super URL and then we rank for those keywords. But then it seems like with PBC, it's not like that. It's like at first when you do kind of, uh, uh, automatic campaign to gather data. You let the data to tell you what keywords yeah. you are converting for, and then you rank for those keywords. Right. So there's, it's, it's actually kind of a backwards um, um, strategy, right? Exactly. You wanna, you wanna talk a little bit about that ranking uh, part of things? Yeah, so 
again, the thing that determines most of the ranking in general, page views and, and sales essentially. Yeah. But it's not sales per keyword necessarily. Mm -hmm. How much money is moving through that listing? So one thing that we see a lot with people who have done rank and bank wrong is they'll give away a lot of units to rank on one keyword. They'll get there on that keyword and then they'll fall off sometime later because their listing does not have the revenue to keep them where they're at. With, with PPC, the goal is to move more revenue through the listing so that the listing begins ranking up for many keywords all over the place and you fight session by session to rank up overall. If you're number one on you know, six, seven, eight keywords, it's much easier for you to move a little bit more revenue to get to number one on your main category versus trying to do it the other way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's two different approaches, which is very interesting. Like PPC, again, for those that didn't catch on, PPC will essentially like, um, Amazon will essentially help you to rank for the keywords based on data. Whereas for Rank and Bank, we look at, for example, Cerebro or look at a keyword tool and then we just pick those keywords. Now, there's pros and cons to each approach. So with, with, with the PBC side of things, it just takes a little bit longer to rank. Like yeah. we've seen ranking using rank and bank literally like under a week, which is pretty much impossible using PBC. PBC, I would say like, what would you guys say the, the, the length is to rank on page one, generally speaking, um, for even smaller keywords using PBC, would you say it's like two weeks, a month, two months? What would you say? I would say that if you get to rank number one in a meet, like a fairly competitive keyword, nothing hyper competitive, but fairly competitive. If you do that within two months, you're in good shape. So it is a strategy that takes longer. Yeah. The good news is, is that it's always it, as you're refining it, it's more profitable and you stay there longer typically. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the big key. If that's, what's going to help you then hold that rank. Yeah. And re with refined bids, and we can really hammer on that with the exact match campaigns that we've funneled all those best keywords down into. Right. Somebody right. had a question. They asked about our service. What's the length of the contract? Um, we have a very small set of agreements. And the straight up answer to that is it's month to month. People yeah. don't have to work with us for six months a year. Um, if you, if I, my philosophy is I want to work with you and help make you money, and I want you to be here. If you don't want to work with us, I don't want you to work with me just because there's a contract in place and have us both hating doing this, right? It's a partnership. And if you're working with somebody in a partnership, if somebody wants to leave, then that's their choice. You, I absolutely do not believe in long-term contracts. Right. Uh, you said each campaign should have 30 keywords. Does that include broad end phrase? So no, that's, that's an estimate, but yeah. Sorry, Nick. Yeah, it's, it's 30 to 50 to start out. It, it can depend on, say you do actually find 60 or 70 keywords that are really relevant for your product. You just have to have those in there, do that. But yeah, then it, it's, it, you take those 70 keywords and they are in each campaign. So in the exact broad phrase yeah, to, to test them in all different scenarios. Okay, again, so it's not, it's, so it's, so, sorry, so it's separate. Yes. Yeah, they, they're separate. And again, this is a lot for like that part was for creating the initial campaign. You're going to obviously test more keywords. And as time goes on, you're going to have a lot more than 50 keywords in your exact match campaign. That's pumping all your numbers. Yeah. Uh, Mandeep asks, once you rank for a keyword, should you stay, should, uh, should you still say on that page and lower the bid or turn it off that keyword and keep monitoring your position? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and assume he's talking about once you've ranked to number one for a yeah. keyword. I um, mean, yeah. we kind of talked about that before. If you have variations, it can behoove you to show a variation because then they look like different listings, different products to the customer. And they see that you're getting multiple impressions. Um, a good example is Nick has creatine full up here, right? The yeah. top one is let's say, and this is not the case here, but let's say that you know, micronized creatine was also displaying their, one of their two packs as a sponsored brand right there, as a sponsored brand and then as their ad. So in this first page on desktop, and keep in mind, most of your traffic's on mobile, you're actually getting 
seven placements, you're only really paying for two. Only They're probably only going to click one. And then the customer has just seen your product so many times at that point, they trust that it's a good one. Very few people walk into a store with a thousand items with, that all have tons of reviews and say, man, everything this guy sells is crap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Steven says, I've been able to rank my products through PPC to page one organic placement, but was not able to get it to the top of page one. Uh, the A cost was unsustainable. What's the trick to get it top organically? So I'm assuming like top one, two, three. Run through that list we talked about. Look at your campaigns. Look at your conversion rate. What are those things? What's the lowest number to bring up? Right. If the A cost, if your conversion rate was 10, 15%, and you can push that higher, that's going to automatically take the cost of your campaigns down. Um, barring that, if everything looks pretty tight there, then what I would recommend is cut back to a point where you can stomach on those keywords to get to number one, number two, number three, and then look for other keywords around that. You know, part of that 20% on the outskirts that people may buy they may not buy, begin testing more words because if you get more revenue moving through that listing, you'll begin ranking for that keyword regardless. How do you use placements? So placements is tested when you change bids. Um, when you're looking at like I'm bidding X amount and I'm getting top of search this percent of time and you can actually look directly in the campaign manager and see what your placements are. You want to look at if you're what percentage of placements you're getting if you're placed a lot in the you know number one number two etc and those slots versus down at the bottom and compare that to your sessions don't necessarily look at your sales because the two aren't directly related right look at your sessions if you notice you're getting way more sessions when you are ranked higher on the page and your business overall has been more profitable that's when you do that. Yeah, you know, it's not like you can tick a box that says only display top, right? You have to find out where the break point for each keyword is where most of the time you display it top. But mm -hmm. you really wanna look at that in compared to your sessions and sales. Mm -hmm. How about, how much search volume do you mean by fairly competitive keywords? So I actually don't define um, competitive by search volume. I combine that by how many competitors are in the space. The largest categories on Amazon, I like to use creatine as an example because it's within, at least to my knowledge, it's within the top three most competitive categories. All of us know about the garlic press example. That still doesn't have nearly as many companies trying to sell as the creatine does. So when I'm talking about competitive, I mean how many competitors are in the space, not even necessarily search volume. Interesting. Uh, I don't feel comfortable going for high volume keywords while I have low reviews when launching. Can I go for search terms under 10,000? So I think we just talked about that. Um, you look more, not so much for the search volume, but you look for more about the competition. Yeah. And uh, I want to kind of talk a little bit about that. He said, when I have low reviews, so your reviews on PPC are going to below 22, they will impact your conversion rate. Above 22, they do not. And that's just Amazon in general. Why that is, I could not tell you. You know, it's the same reason why does why do gas prices end in nine tenths of a cent? They could have chose nine seven tenths of a cent, right? When marketers sell something, it used to be 99. Now they end in 97 cents or 997 instead of 999. Some people are going to 993. It's just a psychological fixture. After 22 right now, it doesn't increase your conversions. It does increase your click-through rate. So that will help, but it doesn't make you sell any more product. So once you have 22, go for whatever keywords you want to rank for and that you can do at a profit, especially if you're starting out and you have to watch your budget. Cool. Uh, let's do just three more questions here. Uh, is there a way to quickly how many, check how many competitors are in a space? Um, um, I look at the number of, sorry, Tom, go ahead. No, no, you go. I look at the number of pages that are on a particular search and then I'll just click through until I find those that are mostly there. And then I know I'll just count it up how many are on the page and then multiply that way. 
I wouldn't click through every single one, but I would again just go through until you start getting results that aren't aren't relevant, right? Because keep in mind, not all of these people are going to advertise on that keyword, but they're all people who will eventually either leave or begin to compete against you. So that's something to consider. Cool. Uh, second last question for the placement tab in the campaign: Does product page placement help? your keyword ranking for example is it better to increase bid so your ad spend goes to the top of search and less ad spend for product placement that depends on what's generating you the most sessions in my experience most of the sessions are going to come from top of page placement that's where you're going to get the most play so that's uh you know that's the most most beneficial now it's not always the case some categories an example it's easier to target and more profitable to target products that are more expensive than yours, have a higher or a lower star rating than yours. And in some cases, it's just not at all profitable to try to go for top of search most of the time. Right. And I think we answered this question earlier, right? This was a question. Tell me wrong, Pete. Um, yeah, so with that, um, put them all in the same grouping. And then, yeah, if you have multiple variations, run them all in the same grouping let Amazon and the customers, you know, context trigger which one shows up because as long as you get them onto any one of those variations, they're going to have the opportunity to view all your variations within that listing. Right. Sweet. Well, we went a little bit overboard, but, uh, by half an hour, but that's extra value for you guys. And, uh, yeah, I, I think PBC is definitely one of those things where it's, um, there's, there's a lot of data, there's a lot of work involved in doing the maintenance, the setting up. And uh, for me, I mean, just, just to give you guys a little bit of background, um, we, PBC was actually one of the first things we outsourced before I hired any employees, before I, I think even had a customer service agent. Um, so I think for us, we outsource our PBC. Don't quote me on this, but I think once we had like a hundred or $150,000 per month, we started looking for an agency and then we passed that on to them and they've been taking care of that ever since. So, um, yeah, at the end of the day, uh, obviously there's a, uh, there's a fee involved. That's how Charles make money. That's how he feed his family. And, um, but at the same time, my logic is if I pay Charles $1,500 per month, can Charles make me back more than $1,500 per month? It's like, it's yes or no, right? It's very binary. So if I feel like Charles can make me back more than $1,500 per month, that means Charles needs to sell, um, no, a hundred more units or 1500 more, you know, whatever the number is, like you just got to think that to your head. And then Charles, basically uh, Charles, like I'm pretty sure and don't call, Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you're not going to work with anyone who's like, you're just like, dude, it, it, this listing is not like we can't PBC is not a no. cure for your Amazon business. Like don't expect, if you have a one star, if you have one star reviews, really bad images, really bad copywriting, you're like, Hey, turn on PPC for me. I want to make a bunch of money. It doesn't work that way. So I've always <laughs> preached like building the solid foundation, foundation, foundation. PPC is just adding fuel to the fire, right? Uh, that's all it is. So don't think PPC is just going to magically cure your business. But, um, yeah, I think for us, like we, um, when we launch right now, we're not launching any new products, but I think when we do launch, I want to do a, um, uh, a case study where we only launch using PBC. I think that's going to be, that would be pretty interesting, but obviously that's going to be like a longer term play rank and bang. Hey, quick two weeks, boom, you're up there. PBC two months, three months, longer play just kind of depends. But at the same time you can do both, right? You can do PBC and you can do rank and bang, but you better have the budget for that. So anyway, um, did you guys enjoy this? If, if you guys enjoy this, can you guys type in, uh, uh, one, maybe just, just type in number one, if you guys enjoyed it, uh, David, Ryan, Carlos, James, Joel, Mahila, uh, Advendor, Sam, Vladimir, Adrian, Grace, David. Uh, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Wow. Look at all those ones coming in. That's amazing. Okay. So yeah, I mean, guys, I hope we learned something new today <laughs> for $20. I think that was definitely worth the value. And we went on uh, about 35 minutes more than, more than we were supposed to. But hey, okay, guys, if you guys are qualified to talk to Charles, highly, highly recommend give, getting in contact with him. Charles, can you just, uh, what is your uh, URL one more time? S yeah, uh, flash that, Nick. It's just talktosa.com. Talk, yeah. Yeah, talk to S A. 
sa.com, S as in seller, A as in arenas, talk to sa.com. Or if you guys are not at the 30K per month yet level, hey, get to 30K a month by yourself. It's really not that difficult. I think you can get there with two products, even one product. Uh, and then once you're there, hit these guys up and hopefully they can um, help you guys to make a bunch of money, okay? So guys, that's pretty much it. I'm actually going to render the video right now. I'm gonna upload it onto YouTube via a private link. You'll get an email from me probably within the next uh, two hours. Uh, if you don't receive it, check your spam. Sometimes my emails go in there. But that is pretty much it. So guys, I really hope uh, you enjoyed this. And by the way, if you guys have any recommendations of what, what you would like to hear next, whether it's like you want me to find someone who's, I don't know, like um, who's really good at like sourcing or someone who's like really good at um, specific parts of Amazon or just maybe someone who's good at Amazon in general. Like I have a lot of people in my network that I can bring on. If you guys like these like mini lectures, mini sessions, you know, two hours long afternoon, learn something new, 20 bucks, um, you know, I can make it happen. So tell me you guys, I, at the end of the day, like I'm doing this for you guys. Um, you know, I, I like, I'm not getting paid from Charles, like every single sign up that he makes, I don't get a percentage of that at all. So um, yeah, I'm doing this for you guys. And I want you guys to learn because I think this is an amazing opportunity for everybody. And um, yeah, a lot of people ask me like, Tom, why, why are you teaching other people? It's like this pie is so oh my God. massive so that like, like Jeff Bezos is about to become the first trillionaire, Tri trillionaire. That's what a thousand billions. That, that's not even comprehensible. Okay. So um, the pie is big enough for all of us uh, to, 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 to make money on. So that's why I'm doing this because it's having that abundant mentality instead of thinking like the, having the hoarding mentality It's two different you know, scales. And I'm definitely more on the uh, abundancy. So anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to get to work, make sure the replay is up as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, talk very soon. Thanks again, Charles and Nick. Thanks for Thank having you. Us. Thanks guys for listening. All right. Talk to you guys soon.